Good afternoon, everyone. I'll be talking about the role of intraarticular steroid therapy and traction immobilization in cases of idiopathic chondrolysis of the hip. So idiopathic chondrolysis of the hip is a rare condition and essentially a diagnosis of exclusion. The classical findings are of an adolescent girl walking into the OPD with a painful stiff hip and with a normal looking x-ray with or without history of a trivial trauma. The MRI finding is classically of a trapezoid signal change in the femoral capital epiphysis. It is often misdiagnosed as an infection, especially tuberculosis in our scenario, and treated empirically. There is no universally accepted treatment as of yet, and there is dearth of literature as far as treatment is concerned. Our aim was to evaluate the clinical and radiological outcome of our method with a three-year-old follow-up. So our uh, study included 28 patients. It was a prospective study over eight years, and all the procedures were done by a single surgeon in a tertiary care center. We had four males and 28 fem uh, 24 females. The mean age was 13.6 plus or minus three years. The mean duration of symptoms was six plus or minus two weeks. And the mean follow-up was of 35 months. Uh, we included early stage idiopathic chondrolysis of the hip. There was uh, no previously done hip procedure. And the exclusion criteria was other joint involvement, evidence of infection, and history of major trauma. So our we first gave intraarticular steroid, which was followed by gentle manipulation under anesthesia, which included full flexion, 30 degrees of both adduction and abduction, and 25 degrees of internal rotation and external rotation, which was followed by immobilization for three weeks with the use of a Thomas splint, which was followed by non-weight bearing rehabilitation for three weeks. So this is how we uh, injected the steroid. We, uh, we drew a line from the ASIS to the GT, and at the junction of the upper one-third and lower two-third, we injected the... So we injected intraarticular methylprednisolone, one ml of it, which is equivalent to 40 milligram, with one ml of sensorkin and two ml of xylokin. This is how we injected under CM guidance by the anterior lateral portal, followed by manipulation under general anesthesia, followed by traction immobilization using Thomas Lynn. So uh, our results were uh, the patients who were not able to squat or sit cross leg pre-procedure, 78% of them were able to do so after 12 weeks. There was significant uh, improvement in range of motion, especially flexion and abduction after 12 weeks. Uh, the VAS score also significantly improved from an 8.6 pre-procedure to 1.6. And the modified Harris HIP score also improved from 48.6 pre-procedure to an 88.2 at the latest follow-up. This is an example of a case where a female, 12 year old female came to the OPD with a painful stiff hip and with an abduction deformity with a classical MRI finding of a trapezoidal signal change. This is the post-op x-ray and this is a three year old follow-up x-ray where you can see squaring of the pelvis and uh, decrease in the joint uh, narrowing. And this is the same girl of 12 weeks who's able to sit cross leg or squat. So our outcomes were five out of the 28 subjects did not regain motion, but 16 did, and seven were lost in attrition, four underwent excision arthroplasty, one underwent a total hip arthroplasty, and two lost to follow up. So uh, ICH as a condition should be suspected in a classic scenario when an adolescent girl walks into the OPD with a painful stiff hip and normal looking x-ray. Rheumatic conditions are definitely to be ruled out by serological tests. It is an underdiagnosed condition, and more awareness is definitely needed. The most common initial diagnosis is of an infection, and the final diagnosis is of exclusion. Uh, as per literature, there are various procedures described like hip arthrodesis, capsulectomy, excision, hip arthroplasty, but all these are pretty morbid procedures with uncertain success rates. Intraarticular injections are underutilized by orthopedic surgeons, though they are simple, uh, they are less morbid and can be used in early stages. Our limitations was that the uh, it was a small sample size and long-term followers wasn't there. So to conclude, intraarticular steroid and traction immobilization could be an effective treatment for ICH. An improvement in patient function is definitely noted. And surgical intervention, if at all needed, is delayed. Thank you.